Recently, a huge dark region known as the Coronal Hole has appeared near the sun's equator and has become very popular in the scientific world. That's because solar activity increases all year long. As the sun approaches an explosive peak in the approximately 11-year solar cycle, known as a solar maximum. But strangely, the massive new coronal hole is not expected to be part of this increase in solar activity. Coronal holes can occur at any point in the solar cycle, but they are actually more common during solar minimum. When they occur during solar maximum, they are normally located near the sun's poles, rather than near the equator. Therefore, it is still a mystery how such a large hole opened up near the equator when we are so close to solar maximum. But plenty of other evidence has emerged over the last few weeks that the sun is becoming more active. On November 18th, a massive sunspot archipelago, consisting of at least five different groups of sunspots, emerged on the sun's near side and has since launched dozens of solar storms into space. On November 25th, an explosive canyon of fire explosion near the sun's equator unleashed a coronal mass ejection, a fast-moving cloud of magnetized plasma that then crashed into Earth, triggering rare orange auroras. And on November 28th, a nearly, that's why different auroras, have been seen in many places around the world. Let's get back to our topic. This huge hole opened in the sun is about the size of 60 Earths and reached its maximum width of 497,000 miles or 800,000 kilometers in just 24 hours. So, can these holes and solar flares in the sun cut off the internet or electricity? Experts initially predicted that this last hole could trigger a moderate intensity G2 geomagnetic storm, which could trigger radio blackouts and strong auroras for the next few days. But because the solar wind is less intense than expected, the resulting storm has so far produced only weak solar flares. However, auroras are still possible at higher latitudes. In addition, the solar flare must be an X-class solar flare to cut off the internet and electricity. But what makes this news so popular is that the recent increase in solar activity is probably a sign that we are on the verge of a solar maximum. In October, scientists revised their solar cycle predictions and now predict that the explosive peak could begin as early as 2024. Another question is why does this huge hole in the sun appear black? This is because the hole is cooler and less dense than the surrounding plasma, so it appears as dark spots. This is similar to why sunspots appear black. However, unlike sunspots, coronal holes are not visible except in ultraviolet light. It is not clear how long the hole will remain in the sun, but it is known to be a maximum of 27 days. So how can we protect our electronics from solar flares? You can do this in three different ways. One, Faraday cages. These are metal boxes that block electromagnetic fields. You can purchase commercially available Faraday cages or create your own cage using metal containers such as cans or metal mesh. Place your electronics inside the cage to protect them from induced currents. Two, metal enclosures. If you don't have a Faraday cage, any metal enclosure can provide some protection. Consider placing your electronic devices in metal cabinets, drawers, or even metal trash cans. Three, aluminum foil. While not ideal, wrapping your electronic devices in multiple layers of aluminum foil can provide some basic protection. However, make sure it is tightly wrapped and sealed to avoid creating gaps through which electromagnetic fields can enter. What happened in the biggest solar flares in history? One of the largest and most intense explosions that comes to mind when talking about solar flare is the Carrington event, which occurred in 1859. It was a class fortunately. The lack of technological dependency at the time meant that it did not cause major damage. But if such a storm occurred today, it could have devastating consequences for our modern infrastructure, including power grids, satellites, and computer networks. Similar solar flares occurred in 2000, 2003, and 2006 and disrupted some satellites. The solar flare that occurred in 2012 caused minor radio outages and disruption of GPS navigation systems around the world. It also caused a power outage in Quebec, Canada, affecting millions of people. Yes, we have come to the end of our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.